Welcome to Knife Chats. If you like what you see, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, share it with friends, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. Thank you. Okay, it took a while, but finally I got it. Something that is very rare, very elusive, something you don't find every day, but I finally managed to get one and I thought I would share it with you now because it is such a cool knife and that is the Victorinox Tinker. Oh, wait, this is just your basic red Victorinox Tinker, been around since like the 50s, uh, nothing special about this one that's not the knife i meant sorry um oh here it is the victorinox tinker now that's more like it the hide and seek world champion bigfoot victorinox tinker by smkw.com this is a smoky mountain knife works exclusive or special factory offering uh from victorinox through smoky mountain knife works and it is the Bigfoot Tinker. Now, for those unfamiliar with a Tinker, uh, Tinker is basically a Spartan, uh, a Spartan knife, which is the oldest uh, version of the Swiss Army officer's knife was the Spartan. Well, it began life as the officer's knife, but sometime in the 50s, they started uh, putting a, uh, a Phillips driver in place of the corkscrew, and today the Tinker probably has surpassed the Spartan in popularity. Definitely here in the United States, people would much rather have the Phillips driver instead of a corkscrew. You know who would rather have the corkscrew, but we won't talk about that. In any case, besides the Phillips driver, you also have a reamer with sewing eye, which is really good for punching holes in leather and actually sewing things up. There's YouTube tutorials on how to do that. You got your little key ring here, and then you have a uh, a toothpick on the back scale or back uh, cover. And then in the front, you have a pair of tweezers. And then on top, you have your... Um, can opener with the small uh, driver, which actually acts as a Phillips driver as well. And then you have the uh, cap lifter screwdriver wire stripper that has the 90 degree stop and the full stop. And it's a harder stop so that it is less likely to uh, turn on you when you're actually using it. So the, the stop is there to for one reason for doing this when you want to get a little more torque, but also uh, to prevent it from closing so quickly on you. Um, then you've got a small pin blade and a large spear blade. All of this on a 91 millimeter frame. And, uh, but really what we're looking at here is the scales uh, on the knife. Uh, I'm sorry, it's a handle or cover. Um, You'll find out in uh, in the world of Swiss Army knives, the uh, the covers or handles are often called a scale. Uh, the all three words are interchangeable. I know technically the scale is the part that the handle is uh, mounted onto, but um, the, there's a lot of um, <laughs> in the world of Swiss Army knives, uh, people will call this a scale, a handle, or a cover. Um, I'm sorry, that's the way it is, and uh, I hope people don't get upset with me when I get confused with that. In any case, let's get back to the video of Bigfoot. Uh, we've got the, uh, on the very front, you've got your uh, Victorinox cross at the very top. Then you've got the blue ribbon here in the middle. And then you've got the striding Bigfoot on the bottom. Uh, and that is reminiscent of the Patterson-Gimlin film from 1967, which was taken in uh, Northern California. Uh, since, uh, has it been debunked? Is it debunked? Uh, there's a lot of debate on that. Uh, most people will say that it's debunked, but, you know, the true believers out there are, know it's real. We know it's real. And then on the back side... You have the hide-and-seek world champion there, which he obviously is. And uh, 
the print is the a, a casting which is very reminiscent of the uh, Bosberg footprint um, that was uh, taken in uh, eastern Washington back in 1969. Uh, this is actually a flip because this uh, is looking like a left footprint, but it really should be the right footprint because the left footprint showed a crippled foot. And it's actually usually referred to as the crippled Bosberg or Bosberg crippled foot. Uh, uh, but this is the good foot, and they actually have just uh, transposed it or flipped it over. Uh, the artwork on this, the original artwork on here, is all done by Brian Wilhoyt at uh, Smoky Mountain Knife Works. But we see where it is uh, reminiscent from in the, uh, the 1969 footprint and the 1967 film. Uh, but, I mean, you got the ribbon up there, too. Um my only uh, complaints about the knife, uh, well, not really a complaint. Uh, typical of these knives, the the uh, the printing is all just printed on the scale. So if you uh, carry it in your pocket a lot, it's going to rub off, especially around the edges. And that is the same case with uh, any of the Victorinox knives. They're limited editions also. It will normally wear off if, uh, if you carry it a lot. Um, the only issue I do have, though, is right here with the T and Bigfoot. Sometimes it gets lost in the artwork. I wish they would have made Bigfoot fit completely inside the uh, the white portion of the circle there of the ribbon, so that it would uh, the the B and the T would not get lost uh, from a distance. Um, but once you know what you're looking at, uh, you know what it is. But so often I look at it, and it looks like it says Big Foo instead of Bigfoot. Um, but I'm all right with that. All in all, it's really pretty cool. And I like the, uh, the footprint on the back. I love the fact that you don't have the same thing on the front that you have on the back. Um, I'm glad that you have actually two, uh, images going on with the knife. Um, the other thing with it though, is these are ABS scales. So if you're one of those people who like to swap scales and put uh, scales on uh, different knives and stuff, you're going to need to be extra careful because these are ABS and not your typical uh, celluloid scales that, uh, uh, I'm sorry, cellador scales that are used on uh, Swiss Army knives because these don't have quite the same amount of flex as you find on the cellador scales. Uh, the ABS is a little uh, more brittle, so it's more prone to cracking. So you need to be extra careful if you are one of those people who like to swap scales and say, like, put the, uh, take these off of a tinker and put them onto like a, uh, a champion or a, uh, uh, a huntsman or something like that, you have a chance of cracking these scales uh, much more readily than your basic cellador scales, such as uh, what you find on knives like this. Uh, any case, there you have it. Uh, what I'll do at the end here is just take some photos of the knife up close and personal uh, so that you can uh, get a better picture of just what these knives are. And in the meantime, if you're interested in getting one, I would suggest uh, hopping on the SMKW website and ordering it as soon as possible because they are going to sell out and they may not come back. Because remember, Bigfoot is pretty elusive. He doesn't really like people seeing him. Uh, yeah, but I do have proof positive in my hand that he exists because... Uh, there's no way Smoky Mountain Knife Works would have made this knife uh, to promote something that doesn't exist. Bigfoot obviously exists. At least the knife exists. For now. <laughs>
If you did, please give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel and ringing that notification bell so that you will be notified when the next episode of Knife Chats is up online. Thanks again. See you soon.